Welcome everyone. This is uh, Jenkins Platform SIG meeting. We're on April 9th, 2024. Today, that's just the two of us, Mark Waite and myself. Hello, Mark. Uh, so for today, we have quite a few items. We'll talk about the agenda, Java 21, uh, Docker Hub, um, the release work on the agent and controller images, the current work in progress on images. If we have time, Docker-based quick start tutorials. And that's all, unless Mark, you have something to add to the agenda. No, that's great. Okay, thank you. Then first of all, agenda related items. Uh, with the government uh, messing with our clocks, so it has changed, at least for me, I don't know for you, Mark, but I guess so. So it's now one hour later than it used to be during the winter time. So would you mind if we scheduled that one hour earlier or would that collide with other meetings? That sounds great to me. Let's move it one hour earlier. Thank you, Mark. I'm afraid the action item is on you <laughs> because uh, I can't modify the... Kind and of. I'm I'm going to do it right now. So it'll Ooh. be scheduled. Now, time zone right now is UTC. Do you want me to switch it to Paris time so it doesn't change for you? Yes. Yeah. I'm not a master in time zones and so, but I hope <laughs> that will also work for you. We may have one of two weeks of mayhem because I think you change time before I do, but... Yeah, I think it's it's very reasonable for us to say that we're going to set the time uh, based on the the leader of the SIG. So why not? So that's Western oh. European time. Oh dear, Western European time. I see not UK, not Madeira, not Lisbon, Berlin. Uh, I think it's the same one. Uh, Paris, there we go. Central European time. All right, got it. So Thank setting it to, and now I've got to be sure that I get the correct clock time. <laughs> what time is it right now in Paris? It's uh, seven, uh, three past seven. Okay, so, so 7 o'clock p.m. All right. Yeah. So Got 6 p.m. 7 p.m. Okay. Paris time. Save uh, this and following events. Okay, done. So you said oh, you wanted it at 6. You wanted it at 6 yes, p.m. Yes, please. Right. Let's <laughs> My fix fault. that. My mistake. 6 p.m. So I successfully retained the exact same time. That's not what we want. <laughs> okay. okay. This <clears> and <throat> following events. Got it. Thanks a lot, Mark. And now I have a very bold request. Now that you have changed the time, I'm not available two weeks from now. So uh, should we cancel or would you like to host this meeting? Uh, I should be available as far as I know. So I'll host it. Oh, thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, lazy French people taking some time off. Ah, uh, well, Mark will host the meeting. Thank you, Mark. Um, now, on to the next, next subject. Is there anything new regarding the Java 21 support plan or? Yeah, yes, yes, sort oh. of. So I've, I've involved, I've, the spring project announcement is getting an awful lot of my attention and trying to understand what it will mean for us to transition Jenkins from Jakarta 8 to Jakarta 9, Jakarta EE 8 to Jakarta EE 9 and Spring Security 5 to Spring Security 6, and Spring six. Framework 5 to Spring Framework 6, and Jetty 10 to Jetty 11. There, well, are, uh, There's a really great uh, epic in the Jenkins Jira that I will put into this link into oh, this yes, thank you. that Basel created about 18 months ago that outlines the many different things that have to be touched by this. So, oh, really? 18 so, months ago. Right. Oh. It was August of 2022 when he did the initial research. And... And but I'll link it into the into the meeting notes yep. so that we've got it. Okay. Um, now the next subject Damien wanted us to address uh, is to have a look at the Docker Hub download statistics for 2024. So I had a quick look earlier today, and I don't know what to think. <laughs> I said that uh, lots of people are using uh, the LTS tag, which is a good thing. Uh, unfortunately, lots of them are also using the um, latest for the agent. And as Damien always say, friends don't let friends use latest. So people out there listening to us, uh, <laughs> you should use a pin version and use something like Dependabot, a BTLI, or anything you would like to keep things up to date and make a PR if you can when you... Okay, that's just if you have... Um, 
uh, deep, uh, infrastructure as code. Of course, if you do everything by hand, well, you're on your own. But yes, using Latos, you could have some bad surprises. That's not always a good idea. Um, but I've been there. I've done that. Well, <laughs> now that I, I try to use pin version just about everywhere. Anyhow, so it's the same pattern for uh, February and even for March. So that's a good thing that we know that people are using the, the LTS and not really the weekly, except people who like adventures. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Damien wanted me to say about that. Uh, frankly, I'm not... Um, big static six um, fan, so I don't know what kind of insight I could get from these. Okay, um, so, well, so are you okay if I talk to it for a minute? Oh, yeah, thank you, Mark. Okay, so so let's go back to the January, let's see, is go to the, switch to another tab, one that has, there we go, this one. All right, so there are some key things here for us um, worry wise for me, oh, row, row number four, Jenkins inbound agent version 4.9-1 is very old, very, very old yeah. inbound agent long ago switched to a much, much more verbose version numbering scheme, but there are 330,000 pulls of that thing. However, only from less than a hundred unique IPs, which is is okay one why aren't they caching them if they're why are they pulling yeah. so often instead of caching and that may indicate somebody's got a misconfiguration or we're shipping something that's misconfigured uh oh. and and so there's a there's a danger for instance if one of our helm charts encodes that version number and we're not updating it we should so that that was a concern for me of that one on the top of the list um the the other thing that caused me concern was looking in, if you look, go to the March, the March tab and here, right. So here, look at row 10. 2.263.1 is a very old release, yet it's been pulled, it was pulled 88,000 88. times by 46 IP addresses. So so again, somebody is using an awful lot of Docker bandwidth that mm -hmm. is a relatively small pool of users. If we compare the the numbers of downloads, same same thing at row three there, right? Where we've got 300,000 downloads of the 4.9-1 agent image, but only 60 IP addresses. So it's what is that three orders of magnitude different than the controller unique IPs? Yeah. So for me, there's there are some hints here that we may need ways to tell people. We can't tell people stop doing this, but we may want to check for possible misconfiguration in any of our own samples that might still be using these outdated oh. container images. Now, so you mean the documentation of samples or something we should... Uh, search for, for example, the 4.9-1, um, one, one. right, okay. to see that, hey, we're not not somehow recommending oh. it. And the places we might be doing that, it might be in Helm charts, it might be in, in Jenkins Operator, there are all sorts of places where we could reference that. And the other is they may just have bad practices and they're never updating. And if they're never updating, then we can't we certainly can't stop them. They are free to stay on that old version if they wish. Yes, that course, version yeah. won't work with modern Jenkins versions, by the way. That inbound agent is rejected completely when you yeah. attempt to connect it, if I remember correctly, to current versions that we support. It will just refuse. It says, I'm sorry, remoting version is too old. Yes, and I also saw some GDK8 references in uh, January, I think. Right. So yes, we can't do anything about that. We won't rebuild, you know, just to add a warning message or whatever. We can't and we won't do that. So whenever, if we never find any reference to these old versions in our own uh, repositories, then we just can't do anything about that. Right. Except... And and that's that's we are grateful that Docker Hub is that. Docker is willing to continue hosting, right? That's that's yes. very, and, and we're probably not the heaviest consumer of Docker Hub. Uh, 
right? There are no. there are certainly heavier weight consumers than we are, but being aware that this is is at least for me interesting. Thanks a lot for coming to my rescue, Mark. <laughs> I was kind of lost with these statistics. The only thing that I wanted to see that I was not able to find in these statistics were about the platforms. Um, I wanted to know if some people were using ARM32, for example, or uh, S319X and see the ratio between AMD64, ARM64 and the rest of the architectures. But unfortunately, I don't think Docker Hub gives us this kind of information. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't recognize it. Yeah, whatever. Uh, thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and this is linked to another subject, which is would we have too many Docker images? So uh, most of the time we try to help people when they are requesting, uh, you know, uh, I'd like to have another image with that tool installed when it makes sense for the infra and for the whole doc, um, doc Jenkins community, we do it. But from time to time, we have to refuse because we just can't make a custom image for each and every end user that uh, who needs it. So this week, we had an end user asking for a specific image for EC2 because it doesn't the latest version of what we supply doesn't work for them anymore. But it just happened to work in the past without any specific action on our side and now it doesn't work anymore. So the user was asking if we could uh, supply another image that could work for him, but the answer was unfortunately, no, we can't. That's not reasonable. That's not something we want to maintain. So you're on your own, but that's not a bad thing. I guess sometimes um, users have to build their own images on top of ours, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, and to tell the truth, I'm doing that on a daily basis uh, because it's not always customized to your own needs. So you have to do it by yourself. Um, this is also linked to another subject, which is the Docker Hub that keeps sending HTTP 429 errors. Um, I think Damien and the rest of the infra team has already uh, digged and know some things about why it's failing. I think it's partly uh, linked to the fact that we are only using one IP to push to Docker Hub. And it's not a rate limiting thing, but somewhere it is. I don't know, it's kind of uh, complicated. But the thing is, the more images we have, the more bandwidth we use for Docker Hub. The most uh, different these images are, the most layers we are using, uh, the more bandwidth we are using with Docker Hub to build and push and even uh, pull back the first layers we need to build. So all of this may help uh, if we shrink uh, the number of images, if we have a common path to build these images. So one of the subjects that we will uh, work on in the coming weeks or months is that uh, we should try to um, build our Docker images starting from the Tamarin binaries and not from the Tamarin Docker images starting from Ubuntu, if I'm not mistaken, Jemmy these days, so that we have fewer layers and the same layers for lots of different images. So I don't say you and I should do that, Mark, but we have to talk about that uh, within the Jenkins platform SIG meeting. And if I ever have the time to, I'd be glad to do that kind of things. We have already done so when we were experimenting with Java 21 preview images, because at that time, uh, Tamarin was not supplying um, on a regular basis their Docker images, but they were supplying on their GitHub repo the binary releases of the Timurin JDK. So we were starting from the JDK and then importing that into an Alpine, a Debian, um, and all the <laughs> operating system images. So we may go this way once again. I know this has been a discussion for quite some months now. I was pushing for this solution using uh, the binaries and not the Docker images for whatever reason. And I'm not happy that we are going this way because I would have liked to convince people that this was the way to go. We are kind of forced to do that now. So it's, I'm not as proud as we could have been. 
I realize mm. I talk too much, Mark. Would you have any comments Actually, or questions? I feel I feel no shame whatsoever. I think we chose we chose that path, and now we'll switch paths. We're going to. Damien, Damien has noted how much value it will be for us to switch to using binaries. I I think yeah. it is a a nice thing to switch to use binaries, and so let's let's do it. Let's do it quickly and get it done. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And we already have example that used to work, but that shouldn't be too much of a of a big work. Cool. Um, next, the controller weekly have been released. Hopefully, when I, yeah. Um, so there are tags and not releases, as far as I know. Yes, the releases I have not uh -oh, been treated uh -oh, yet. Haven't yeah, done a release. I know, Mark. Shame it's... on me. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all um, you are the only one to do that manually, and I don't know if we should do that via script or something. I don't want to replace you by a script, but you know, you've got already so much on your plate. So the releases uh, don't exist yet, but I guess they will exist in the uh, following minutes. <laughs> Well, and, more. and more embarrassing, we didn't have we didn't get one recorded last week either for the for the Docker container. So we did get it on the Jenkins side, but not on the on the core side, core repository, but on the container side. So I'll, let me do that. Thank you, Mark. On the Docker agent why Mark is working, we have just one version bump that led to one new release, and it was just BAT, you know, what is used for the tests uh, that was moved to 1.11.0. And for SSH agents, my oh my, we had lots of version bumps and refactoring, which led to five new releases. The thing is, um, we did not see that we were not following the JDK new releases. Uh, somehow it got lost in the translation. <laughs> so we were several weeks or months without updating the JDK versions. Yes, that happened. So that's why now we have seen lots of version bumps because we put it back and we also had some refactoring. So as for Windows, uh, the LTSC 29, uh, 2019 images now use uh, LTSC 2019 instead of uh, uh, 1809. Um, the Windows images are now multi-stages. We also bumped the BAPS version. We added the JDK 17 as default for Windows. That was not the case beforehand. And we added the JDK 21, which was not available. But that's okay, we still have time before Jenkins moves to JDK 21. But anyway, we're happy with that move. We also added the Windows LTSC 2022 support. And uh, this one, the correct Git LFS installation was a long running um, draft PR, but Hervé finally managed to get it uh, to work. So it bumped its version to the 3.5.1. The major one I was talking about a few seconds ago was the renamement of the JDK updates because yes, we were not updating JDK anymore. We also brought back the Debian JDK 17 images. And of course we bumped the various JDK versions to the latest available. Um, what else? Yes, we used the official Tamarin build for Linus Linux S319X because beforehand we were only using the JDK preview for the S390X platform. Now, for the work in progress on images, we uh, still have the adapted DTLI JDK 11 and 17 manifest for Windows. That's a long running draft PR, but it will take some time. That's okay. And for the Docker agents, we still have three PRs in review or at least. Um, Hmm. Work in progress, I would say. I'm not so sure they are in review. So I think this one, the automatic PR by updates and I could be closed um, because we are not working with the JDK preview version anymore, except for the ARM 32, except that Tamarin doesn't supply any JDK 21 early access version for ARM 22 anymore, 32 anymore. So I guess we could close this one. Uh, this one that was just a proof of concept, the Liberica ARM 32, 
uh, version. So close it or just leave it as is. And this one, the tracks Ubuntu at Debian LTS releases, as I said two weeks ago, uh, in fact, it was a failed attempt. <laughs> uh, so it's a much bigger problem that I will have to address in a way or another. I think I will make three different PRs for this one so we could also close it. It's not really relevant anymore. Uh, and as for the Docker SSH agent, we still have one, which is the bump of OpenSSH 2.9.5 and so on. Mm -hmm. But it fails for several um, Windows Docker images. So we will have to investigate before going any further. Now, next subject about, is about the Docker-based quick start tutorial. So there was a mini drama <laughs> last week. No, just two users, two newcomers were kind enough to let us know that the um, tutorials weren't working for them anymore. At the very beginning, I was kind of skeptical because it worked on the CI, it worked on my machine, it worked on various machines I have access to, but the truth is my Docker versions and Docker Compose versions were not the most updated versions. So people having recent versions of Docker, Docker 26.0, I think, and Docker Compose uh, 25 or anything newer than 24.4.27, I guess, uh, were experiencing problem because we were using some kind of edge case in our Docker Compose. We were using the same name for the various container representing the agents. And that was not such a good idea. It was really handy for us because it allowed us to use one big Docker Compose file and having one agent defined in a JCask, um, how would guy call that? Manifest, config file. Mm -hmm. So it used to work, but when uh, Docker decided it was nice to uh, push a fix to this, you, don't, you should not have uh, several containers having the same name in the same Docker Compose file. Well, our quick start tutorials weren't working anymore, but we found a way to correct that and we have pushed it to the quick start tutorials repo. And we have also updated the um, existing uh, tutorials on Jenkins.io. And Mark, you were kind enough to test it up to the end because of course I tasted it, but it's better on um, another machine by another person. So it worked for you and we don't have any news from the people that created the issue yet, but I'm hoping that that will work for them uh, from now on. And I did, um, I would say a quick hack, a quick and dirty hack. Uh, I have now an update CLI um, manifest that checks the Docker and the Docker version, the Docker Compose version that are used within the GitHub Action CI and that write them into this Docker version .txt. And this is put into the readme.md, which is part of the repo. So now when you read the readme.md in the end, you can see the version that these tutorials have been tested with. And as you can see, uh, these are older versions, but that's what GitHub gives us. So that makes no guarantee that that will work for you, but that's just an indication in case you would like to open an issue in this repo you know that the version that were tested are these ones and maybe yours are different. So you could just tell us uh, within the uh, issue you're having. Mark, any common question uh, about no. that? Thank you for doing it. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, it was frightening at the beginning because <laughs> the tutorials aren't working anymore. Wow. Uh, but then in the end, I was happy and I discovered some nice things about Docker I didn't know. And I thought I had understood profiles before him, um, that problem. And frankly, no, I had no idea how <laughs> that was working. Now I think I know a little bit better about what's going under the hood. Um, so yes, it's working now. I'm not so sure we have to make another subject about the Amper server. It's still running, right? It is. It's it's and, been re relocated physically and successfully oh. relocated and is is now sitting in a different part of the the house doing what it does. 
<laughs> okay. Um, no, not but. And still working. Mm -hmm. Yes. Correctly. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, any other subject you would like to address before we wrap it up? I think that covers us. Okay. Thank you, then. Uh, the recording should be available from 24 to 48 hours. And see you four weeks from now. And of course, Mark, you'll host the next meeting two weeks from now. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye.